Let us pray. Most holy and gracious God, we give you thanks that you love us with a passion that we cannot even comprehend. And that you accept us and you work in our lives to heal us, to redeem us, to restore us, to empower us, to transform the world around us to be as you desire, one of peace, justice, mercy, shalom. So we pray that whatever word we need to hear for where we are on our journey with you, your spirit will quicken it to us today so that we know we've been in, in touch with you and we leave empowered to do your work in the community. We pray, O oh God, that everything we do brings honor and glory to you. In your name we pray. Amen. It's October and it's, it's St. Louis and it's the Cardinals and it's Red October and everybody was, or some people, were watching the game last night. And, and I, there is something about St. Louis and the Cardinals and the games. And when we are at this place in that process, we all of a sudden have all these little things that have to happen like playoff beards. We have to wear the certain cap. We have to have, and that's how we are as human beings. There's something that we need tangible that we can feel or touch to somehow connect us to some higher power that's going to make things work the way we want them to do. And so we wear the cap and when we need to do the rally, we turn the cap or we ban certain people from watching the game because they are a curse to the team. You know, we do all these strange things because as human beings, we need this tangible scenario. And that's kind of what happened to the people of Israel. They needed this tangible scenario. Moses was it for a while when he was there because like they thought well he's like connected to God and so when we see him we know we're connected to God he's tangible and that's a really dangerous thing when you start looking at people who lead churches and that is like God because you put them on a pedestal and they mess up and then we think God has messed up when it's really just our human beings and any week, any day in any week, you can probably turn on a TV or see where some godly person that everybody thought was so connected did something really horrible and ugly. And we still try to hold on to these tangible things because the concept of connecting to God greater than who we can imagine is just daunting. And so this is what happened. Moses went up to spend time with God, and the people were missing Moses. Now, Moses spent about 40 days in God's presence, and Rabbi Arthur Washkow said that probably what Moses was doing was listening to what God's desire was to be in relationship with the people of Israel. But the people of Israel didn't see that because the, the mountain was like taboo territory. If you decided you wanted to go up and join Moses and hang out with God, well, then you would be harmed. It was a boundary you couldn't cross. And so here were these people needing some tangible thing because they didn't feel connected to God. And the whole time, God was like writing this love letter about how to create a space that could, God could come and live and be with the people of Israel. And then, all of a sudden, they messed up. And we won't go into all the stuff they did. It's probably not appropriate for Sunday morning. And you know what? God reacted like a betrayed lover. Got angry. You can remember times in your life when you've been betrayed, especially by someone you really loved you probably felt the same things. I want to just annihilate them, blow them up in smoke, which is why I call it Holy Smokes today. You know that feeling, right? 
And God was in the full of that meal feeling. These people, I have tried, I have tried. I rescued them from bondage. I brought them safely. I give them water. I give them meat. I'm spending my whole time trying to create this place that we can just be together. You and me. Be together as a community. And you go and do someone else. There's a uh, theologian, Amy um, Salum Saluma, I believe is how I say her name. And she says that we live in a world where we are driven to choose sides. We're driven to choose sides. I mean, we do that. Are you Republican? Are you Democrat? Do you like the president? Do you not? Everywhere we go, we're pushed in a place to look at size, to be on that side, and to defend that side. Oh, the simple example is, like if you were watching the game last night, which I wasn't, but I heard on Facebook, if you were a cardinal true fan, the Giants were cheating. And I'm sure if you were a giant true fan, the Cardinals were cheating. But the reality of our community is, we have a lot of brokenness happening right now. We have a lot of people who are choosing sides. And the reality is, is that the way we're wired, we tend to choose our sides by our life experiences. So for instance, one spectrum might be that I've had experiences where police officers were maybe not the most kind and helpful to me. So more than likely, my interpretation of everything that's going on is, these guys are bad. And, and we look at every piece of literature to say and prove that our judgment is right. And maybe on the other side, we've had people who have had an, an unfortunate encounter with a group of young men. And so, of course, they're bad because we had a bad experience. And what happens is when we're in this side thing, we get polarized and we don't listen to one another and we just make matters worse. Because all we're looking for in the data that's coming out, all we're looking for in the conversation that's being said is stuff to prove that I'm right. Because I'm on my side and you need to be on my side or we're not friends. And that's not what God desires. Moses was put in a moment of having to choose sides. God said, hey, I am going to blow these people away. I'm going to rise up a new nation from you. No more nagging, no more whining, no more whatever. It's yours. It's going to be the good life, Moses. And that was God's side. And the other side were the people. And you know who chose what side Moses chose? He chose the people. And he said, God, come on. They're your people. They're not my people. They're your people. You delivered them. You saved them. And do you want those Egyptians to say in their God just took them? Moses was able to listen. And he spoke for the people. And he changed the mind and actions of God. And so instead of destruction, there was redemption for the people. And yeah, we know the story. They keep messing up. We keep messing up. But for a moment, God's mind was changed. Friends, we live in a time that is so critical for our community. Our tendency is going to just be looking to confirm what we already know and what we already think. That doesn't move us forward. That just builds up more walls of hostility. It builds more walls of privilege and more harm. So my challenge this week is that maybe we take off 
the cap of whatever side we're on and we listen and we talk and our goal is peace our goal is justice our goal is to set upright the things that are wrong in our world our goal is to be in relationship with God and one another in this community together let us pray